uses a, uh, proven transmission technology, automatic transmission technology, along with a patented hybrid drive system. Um, this was developed in cooperation with GM, BMW, and Mercedes. So I live in this hybrid development center in Troy, and we work, you know, arm in arm together to put this system together. Now, what it consists of is we call it an EVT, elect electrically variable transmission. Also, it has um, uh, very sophisticated controls. And what I mean by controls is the is the software algorithms, um, power electronics. It has uh, regen brakes and a 300 volt nickel metal hydride battery. That's kind of the guts of, of the system. Um, now, the, the one thing that I always get asked is, what's two mode mean? We were just talking about that before this here. We have um, one mode that's optimized for low load, low speed, kind of city driving conditions. We have a second mode that's optimized for the highway speeds or the high load conditions. Um, and we also have four fixed gears that we can use anytime we want. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, traditional hybrids, usually we'll call them power split hybrids, have basically one mode. In about 45 miles an hour, the transmission and the motors get to kind of a mechanical point, so everything is spinning together. And the electric motors really don't offer any advantage at that point. In fact, they're inefficient because you're spinning them around. So that's a little bit of the differences between us. So we have the low, low, uh, low, low, low speed mode for the city, and that, that tapers off about 45. And then we add this other mode on top of it for the high speed. So that's that's the differences. Okay. So um, as far as in the EVT mode. We were able to use these electric motors um, for fuel economy improvements. We are able to use them for accelerating the vehicle. We are able to use them to, for regenning power. And what I mean by that is when you first start to slow down with this vehicle, you're actually not using the brakes. The electric motors are slowing you down. And all that energy that would have went up in heat into, you know, in the atmosphere, we're recapturing that and putting it back in the battery for use at a later time in those city cycles. So it's basically we're capturing free energy back. So that's a big advantage. Um, now, in, in the first mode that we've talked about, we can drive an electric-only mode up to about 25 miles an hour. I cheated it up to about 28 miles an hour. Um, we can drive in gas mode or any combination of the two, and you'll, you'll see this as you go through the drives. Um, also, in that mode, we have an auto-stop feature. So if you stop at a light, the engine's going to shut off. It'll be in a silent mode, and, and then as you start, you'll be in electric mode also. Depending on the torque you want, it could stay in electric mode or it could start the engine to accelerate you to the point that you want. Uh, also, you'll notice as you're deceling, um, when you hit about 25 miles an hour, the engine could shut off and you'll be driving in electric mode. So this is our, our auto stop feature, as we call it. In the second mode, um, we're able to, on the highway, um, as well as providing additional fuel economy and so forth, we can grab those four fixed gears. What I'm also able to do is to help the Hemi engine stay in MDS mode. And MDS is our cylinder deactivation where we go down to four cylinders. And you'll notice in the conventional uh, cylinder deactivation type vehicles, as you're going along and the grade changes, it'll come back into V8 mode to help you get over the grade. What I can do is use some of that free energy that I've captured to help the Hemi stay in four cylinder mode longer. So you'll see that as you're driving today that you're gonna be in that four cylinder mode a lot more than a normal uh, MDS type vehicle. Um, as far as the, the packaging goes, um, we package pretty well into the, into the Aspen and Durango. As you can see here, if I spun this around, you saw the back side of the case here, it looks like a normal automatic transmission. So if it was closed up here, all you'd see the difference is, is the six high voltage wires coming out of it. So it fit in the tunnel pretty well. Uh, the only thing that, that we had to do here, that's, uh, I was asked some questions about earlier this morning about um, how similar is it to the GM. From here to here, Every part number is the same. What we did here, I had to adapt my back of block to this transmission, so that's all this is doing. Back here, I had to adapt the back of the transmission to our transfer case, and it just depends like how many bolts that you have going into your transfer case and how much length you want in the vehicle. So it's, this is where the difference is, and that's why the cooperation worked out really well for us. 